Let us now use conditional formatting. It helps to get us more data visually and also of course makes it look better. So let us see how we can use it. It is right here under the home tab. But first of all, we need to make a selection where we want to apply the formatting. We select the column, click here. There are a lot of options here. The bigger values are green, smaller are red. This shows the direction of change. As we know, this is the revenue. So let us apply a conditional formatting to this. And this time we will make custom rules. I have put a condition on this cell value that if it is greater than or equal to this value, we will apply a formatting to it, which makes it green. We can also make more customized rules. Here we are using a customized formula. We first define the cell here. We are applying a rule on this cell that this should be greater than 50,000. Then we will color it yellow. Many custom rules like this can be added. But one interesting one is the use of a checkbox. The add-on of checkbox must be enabled. I have enabled it already, so here we have the checkbox. I give it this name. And this is all I can do for now. How do I link it with this? Let us see its settings. Format control. This is the control, which means let it be checked. But what does that mean? It means we can link a cell with it. So suppose we click on this cell. Now this fixed cell is linked with this checkbox. And that means when this is ticked, this cell will read as true. When not, it becomes false. And we will use this fact now to put a new rule. Now we simply write equal to and refer this cell. So when this formula, this cell is true, the following format will be set. Here it is. Here I've pasted the date and revenue data. Let us select this and make a chart from it. From insert, we may insert pictures, shapes, or in this case, we'll insert a line graph to show how revenue has changed with the dates. Now let us try finding the moving average. The moving average helps us to get averaged out values given a period of time. Suppose we take three months. So we can start calculating the moving average from the fourth. What we do here is calculate the average of the previous three. Now this is moving since when we extend this down, the cells will also come down in groups of three. Let us see where this helps us. This time it is a moving average. 
let us compare the two this graph will look a little smoother than this one and smoothing is what moving average achieves it can help us get more balanced predictions as well you may add a trend line here suppose we want a prediction for the next three days what we can use here is the forecast function we will apply here the concept of y is equal to fx y depends on x the y here is the revenue and x is the date Here is our forecast based on the existing values. We may extend this down. We can also extend this sideways. As you can see, this has moved and become B here. Had I fixed the row there, it would not have moved. But here I wanted to shift to the moving average column. 